After a careful analysis of Dr. M's fortress, Bentley came to the difficult conclusion that his demolition skills just weren't going to be enough. If we wanted to get inside the Cooper vault, we'd have to recruit a full-time demolition specialist. However, Bentley's proposed candidate was a shock. My old enemy, the Panda King. As a member of the original Fiendish Five, he had a part in taking out my dad and stealing pages from the thievious Raccoonus. Eventually, I caught up with him, and I claimed back what he had stolen. There was no way I was going to let that monster on my team, but Bentley was firm. He discovered the Panda King had left his life of crime, and was now a monk living the life of quiet meditation high up in the mountains. I wasn't at all convinced, but there was no denying that he had the skills we needed if we were to succeed. So the gang packed up, put on our disguises, and headed east to China. So this opening is a bit different. We don't get a, our title card just yet. Mm. Because this is not is the main levitating? area. This is our this is just a side area. This is for that the take for first mission takes place in, I should say. I think he's levitating. And he somehow got there without a bridge. Oh that's cool. He probably jumped up there because Oh, oh pandas yes, can because jump that high. is a jump that a fat panda can easily clear. <laughs> Stay sharp, team. For all we know, the Panda King's just as dangerous as ever. How can you say that? Just look at him! Have you ever seen someone more at peace with the world? I'll admit, he does look kinda... zenned out. Ah! Uh, Mr. King! Honorable Panda King! We humbly wish to speak with you! I guess he doesn't want to talk. Sorry, Bentley. Let's go. Be realistic, Sly. He's clearly in a deep meditative trance. Huh. It'll take some doing, but I think I see a way to get the team up to his shrine. Good. The walk up here tired me out. I don't want to turn around now. Man, I miss the van. We never had to walk anywhere back then. Okay, okay. Let's just get this over with. Murray, you're up first. If you could get to the top of that pillar, you should be able to use your ball move to bounce all the way up to the Panda King. Okay, bouncing is a lot easier than more walking. Seriously, you guys want to see my blisters? No way, is he serious? Yeah, okay, Master. Bouncing, pillars, piece of cake. <laughs> I hear that. Sometimes you've got to be firm. No, seriously, was he for real about the blisters? Cause... So, considering that this is just bouncing, let's talk a little bit about the panicking. He, we have seen him before, much like yep, we how have. we have seen Mugshot before. He was in Sly 1. And yep. in Sly 1, he was... For some reason, this Sly is feeling a lot more angry about panicking than he felt about Mugshot. Considering they were part of the same group, they both were in the group, both were, you know, nearby when, when the Sly's father was killed and stuff like that. Also, Panicking buried villages, villages in avalanches with his rockets. So, yeah, Panicking is not exactly a nice dude, which is why Sly doesn't like him a lot. Panicking was cool in the first game, I remember him being a cool fight. Position! Penelope, you're up next. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Sly could jump onto small points. Those bamboo shoots would be an ideal means of ascent if they weren't spaced so far apart. Hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can figure it out for myself. It's, uh, got to do with the ice. Okay, so clearly we need more points in order for Sly to ascend. The problem? Where we're going to get them. The answer? Split each shoot down the middle, thereby doubling the points of ascension. However, 
The ice down there appears too thin to walk on, so there's no way to do it by hand. So, I'll need to use my lightweight remote control car to split the trees for us. Perfect! Well, that's it, exactly! Great! Anything for Sly. I love to see him pull out those athletic moves. Good thing I installed a turret on this little lady. So yeah, we're gonna use turrets to shoot out, to uh, split down, uh... uh Bamboo. Bamboo, sh bamboo shoots. Thank oh, you. I like it. It just splits yeah. them and it creates bigger difference uh, distance within one stock. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought it would just be falling and... Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be completely stupid. Okay, yeah, that there was no need for that minigame. Yeah, no it wasn't. Uh, thanks. It looks great. My pleasure. Really. <laughs> Any time. Ah, uh, Sly, isn't it time you climbed up there and joined Murray? Yeah, sure. So now that we split up the shoots with our guns. Uh, remote control, yeah, with our guns, let's steal something from the tigers. Wow. I'm pretty sure that a lot of uh, wildlife preservation people run. Holy shit, that's a gold bar. <laughs> Just casual gold bar in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. You can also get sapphires and and various sizes of diamond, if I remember correctly. But it was a long time since it was a, it was some time since I had to farm for money. I mean, well, technically I'm done with all the recording for now, so I don't need to farm anymore. So yeah. Proactive, unlike me. I'm literally taking I time wouldn't... away from my studies to. To record this. I wouldn't call recording and let's play proactive, but sure. Whack the supports up on those pinwheels! Really? Pinwheel destabilization is the cornerstone of this plan! Pinwheel destabilization, that's what I'm studying in university actually. <laughs> Very tough. I'll get a PhD in uh, pinwheel destabilization. Very great. So yeah, I'm just land in Mary's arms and then jump. Jump and press the circle button, and then jump again. There's changing the gameplay, step by step. Yeah, but you gain control of Mario, that's a neat little detail. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. That is, that, that is in fact, a neat detail. Excellent. Now that the pinwheels are unstable, I just need to light them up with my darts. One shot per rocket should do the trick. But yeah, just shoot the pinwheels. I mean, this is a bit of a hard timing, honestly, but... Oh, well, it actually goes faster the more rockets you shoot. Yeah. The more rockets get fired out. Yeah. You want to, well, on the last one, you want to try a name for the... Uh, second one? Yeah. Yep. You want, to, you want to name for the rocket right before it. So now they're gonna just spin forever. That's how pinwheels work. Pinwheels are about to go. Guru, feel up for a challenge? Well, that's right. You should be able to persuade the guards to help you get up to those rockets. Oh, yeah. That's less persuasion, more mind control, but sure. Whatever you want to call it. No, trust me, we're persuading them. Anyway. We just have to get up to those rockets that are on the roof, that are somehow already on fire? I'm not sure how that works. It's like uh, flamethrowers, man. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. It's ancient Chinese flamethrowers. Mm-hmm. Um, not ancient, but, you know. The whole area has a... not modern aesthetic to it, is what I mean. Yeah, I guess. Strong work. That fallen pinwheel should serve as an excellent makeshift elevator. This was actually in Sly 1, if I, remember, if I remember correctly. There was a mission where we had to protect Murray to get to one of the keys. And Murray actually took the pinwheels uh, and used them as elevators to get to the next uh, segment. So, I mean, that is a neat reference. 
I mean, it still doesn't make any bloody sense. Yeah. But, you know, it is a reference and it's neat. I mean, the idea of circular pads serving as elevators in games is old, but. Yeah, but not in that way. Maybe. Yeah. I agree. He's in a super meditative state. So let's just shout in his ear. Now, to break him out of this trance, we'll need to delve into his mind. A hacksaw, then? No! It'll require channeling. Hi, what da da. Sly, sit beside the Panda King. The guru will bridge your minds. I see you carry the cane of the notorious Cooper Thief Clan. Have you come here for revenge? To steal back the Thievius Raccoonus? Whoa! This is just like the time I beat the stuffing out of you. Why should you care if I bury a few worthless villagers in the snow? You are a thief, just like me. Uh, yeah, are you even listening to what I'm saying? Insolent child! You shall pay dearly for your disrespect. Still, to honor your Cooper ancestry, I will send you to your doom with the beauty of my new firework technique. Flame Foo. Uh-oh. Can't Rex, son. <laughs> Actually, uh, the fight against the Panicking is a lot easier in this game because of new mechanics. Um, yeah. Holy shit, that's, he's literally calling his attacks. He's literally an anime. Snap out of it. This is all Thankfully there is something new to this fight. My mind is clear, focused on your destruction. You see, the fight is not actually about beating Panicking, but to Ooh. make him snap out of his uh, confusion. You know how this will end. I've already beat you once, I can do it again. I have never known defeat. I am unbeatable. Great. So yeah, firing wheel, you can just jump over a uh, looming shot. If shock, you get the correct one, you do you win automatically? Yeah. Okay. So with pulse on fire, you can just stand in the middle, and with looming shot, you can just move a bit to the right. So yeah, the fight is super duper easy. Look, I'm here to help you to get your mind out of this rut. If you truly wish to aid me, stand still and let my fireballs cook your flesh. Boom arms of thunder! Fiery wheel! Fiery wheel! You're just a frustrated firework artist turned homicidal pyromaniac. Am I? Am I? Let us find out. Booming chop! Bombs of thunder! Fiery wheel! Fiery wheel! We both know why you're here. You're fixated on the moment of your greatest defeat. I beat you, and forever after you've wondered how it all fell apart. I hate you, Sly Cooper. You've ruined me. Ruined the Panda King. And I've hated you, but that doesn't make any of this real. Years have passed, and, and we both changed. Come out of this trance. Let's meet each other as we are today, and, and let go of who we were when this fight occurred. You are correct. Forgive me. My mind is not always my own. The Panda King wasn't any more excited about the notion of him joining the gang than I was. If it weren't for the Guru, who for some reason really hit it off with the old guy, the whole deal would have been a bust.
We could see the anger in the Panda King's eyes as he recounted how he lost a member of his own family. A daughter who was abducted by a powerful general from the northern mountains. She was to be the bride in a forced marriage to this unscrupulous ruler, and Panda King was exiled. We agreed to help him recover his lost daughter in exchange for his skills in the Cooper Vault job. I still wasn't convinced this was a good idea, but a deal's a deal. Sly Cooper and the gang yeah. in a cold alliance. Yeah. Socially. So of course, because we're done with the first mission of the episode, we go directly into the setup for the next day. Our objective here is to retrieve the Panda King's daughter, Jane Kitten. She's being kept against her will by this man, General Sal. A real key to this guy. During surveillance, I actually witnessed him kick a puppy twice. He plans on forcing Jing King to marry him next Saturday. Clearly, time is of the essence. Here's the plan. First, I'll approach Sao in disguise and attempt to get hired as his wedding planner. Hopefully, with a man on the inside, we'll get some news on Jing King. Still, we need more information. Two of us will need to work together to steal a pair of twin keys and break into Sal's house of business. Once inside, I'll need to utilize some new technology to circumvent their ultra-tight security. Finally, thanks to Penelope's air sweeps, we've picked up an unusual radio signature out in the water. Someone will need to go eyeball the anomaly and figure out what it is. We can't leave anything out to chance here, or Jing King lives unhappily ever after. 